Labri. Good morning. Which was the signal for me to uh, kick off today's World Latvian Economic and Innovation Forum. It's the 10th anniversary since the first forum was held. And over these 10 years, we, we've had vigorous uh, debates and discussions about the directions of uh, Latvia's uh, economy, how to build competitiveness, and so on. Now, I'm Daunis Hours. I'm a uh, professor of politics at the University of Latvia. So before we get stuck into these economic and innovation issues, I'd just like to say a couple of things about politics, because politics is important as well. Over the last 10 years, since the uh, Economics and Innovation Forum started, Latvia has seen tremendous political stability. Uh, quite unheard of, actually, globally. If we look at the Baltic states in a comparative perspective, and as a comparativist, that's what I do, the Baltic states are amongst the very few countries over the last 10 years where essentially all the major democratic and political stability indicators in all the major indexes, be they qualitative or quantitative, have grown. And while there's been a level of political chaos all around us, including in many of our partner countries here in Europe and elsewhere, the Baltic states have been a sea of stability. And this, of course, is the foundation for faster, accelerated economic growth. And that's the essential issue that we'll be talking about today. But I know that nobody's come here to listen to a political scientist uh, spout his nonsense. So we're going to get everything moving quickly. And first of all, I'd like to give the floor to the president of uh, the World Federation of Free Latvians, Peters Blumbergs. Peter. Your Excellencies, dear guests, on behalf of the World Federation of Free Latvians, I welcome you to the World Latvian Economic and in Economics and Innovations Forum. This year we are marking the 10-year anniversary of the event. It started right here in Riga on the first Wednesday of July, just like this year. During that time, it was during the 25th Latvian Song Festival. And this year we're gathering again on the first Wednesday in July for the uh, uh, 27th Latvian Song Festival. Some thought then, and perhaps continue to think now, that it is a strange time to have a business meeting while the streets of Riga are full of Latvian folk dancers and folk singers, but we thought that this made a lot of sense to meet this week when so many world Latvians will be gathering in Latvia. And that's what makes this conference unique and special. It is truly a global event with Latvians from around the world the US, Canada, uh, Germany, England, Australia. And we counted up there, uh, and of course, Latvia itself. Um, we counted up that there are 25 countries represented today. Uh, and hopefully we can bring our global experience and share information to help the Latvian economy grow. Uh, the, in addition to 25 different countries represented, in the room here, we also have panelists and moderators from around the globe. People are here from New York. People, you'll be hearing from people from New York City, Washington, D.C., San Francisco, Austin, Texas, London, Paris, as well as a, a number of Riga experts, or re, local Riga uh, folks and Latvians. We also have multinational companies represented, Meta, Google, Total Energy from France, uh, and we have leading Amer uh, Latvian companies, including Air Baltic and Draugi Group. Uh, as I, uh, I think we know that Latvians are, of course, culture mavens, as is being demonstrated this week um, it, with the Song Festival, but we can also multitask, so to speak, and have a business meeting and do networking. And sometimes people speak of a good society has both bread and circus, well, today we are bringing the bread along with the circus that is happening uh, down the street. Uh, on, this on this theme of work balanced, balanced with play, um, I would add that um, an important note that there are, even as we're here talking about economics, and while there are people 
practicing folk dancing and singing across town. There are also people in town right now, scores of them, working at the uh, defense ministry and the foreign ministry preparing for the NATO summit, which is taking place next week, basically next door in Vilnius. Since my organization, PBLA, uh, the World Federation, is perhaps best known for fighting for Latvia's renewed independence and then later for its accession into NATO, I would be remiss if I did not mention these defense issues and acknowledge also at the same time the brave soldiers fighting in Ukraine who are trying to it, who are trying and succeeding in holding back Russian imperialist fantasies. They are truly fighting for all of us. Like uh luck this suck uh being Piachon Pedamom Svisiem Sinas. Um and at this time I would like to acknowledge Ambassador uh, Ukraine's Ambassador Anatoly Kutsoval who is here with us today. Uh, then I am going to briefly go over the program. Or I actually just would wanted to um, to mention or start by uh, thanking our honored guests from Latvia, including President Levitz, Prime Minister Kudinch, uh Foreign for, uh, Foreign Minister Vinkevich, and Mayor Statis of Riga. Thank you very much for being here, and thank you for the years of excellent. Uh, cooperation and work together. We really appreciate it, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you, and we look forward to continuing to work with you. I'd also like to recognize, as I mentioned, this forum first started 10 years ago, and it was part of the vision of uh, the former president of our organization, Mr. Jans Kukainz, who passed away uh, approximately a year and a half ago, and we wanted to acknowledge his great contributions to our organization and to this event. Uh, I spoke to his sons, and they were, those of you who knew Giannis know that he was, at the end of the day, just a regular guy, and so we thought maybe at the end of the day, at the events happy hour, we can maybe share some stories about Giannis at that point, um, but I did want to acknowledge him now. Uh, I also want to thank our sponsors. The, our major sponsor is the Foreign Ministry, and Mr. Vinkevich, thank you very much for your uh, Basically, we co-organized this event, and so thank you to them. Thank you to Ambassador uh, Gavel, who is our key partner. And I also wanted, uh, because I see her there, uh, our former or good colleague, Zonda Kalming Lukashevich. Kalming Lukashevich. Um, she's also known as ZKL in certain circles, but uh, uh, she was with us at the start of this project about a year ago. We um, started talking about it and coming up with a plan. So thank you to her as well. Um, the, I also should continue and thank LIA, the Latvia's Investment and Development Agency, for its major contribution to this event. Uh, Mr. Kaspar Zerojkans will be us later, with us later today. And another major sponsor is the Riga City Council. Thank you, Mayor Stachis, and your team. Uh, we had a great meeting with him a couple of months ago, and uh, so we appreciate you being here at this busy time for you. <laughs> um, and then, uh, Finally, also the State Agency for Employment and Evita Simpson, thank you for your support and Evita will also be speaking in the panel later today. And then finally, my, I used to be the president of the American Latvian Association for six years and, uh, and helped them fundraise a lot of money and so I, we squeezed some money out of Alla as well. Thank you to the president of <laughs> Alla, Martin Schondersons, who's giving me a quizzical look right now. Or maybe he's thinking I'm gonna ask him for more money if there are overruns from today. Um, but uh, so thank you to all our sponsors and you are recognized up there as well. Um, so with that, I want to simply wish you a productive forum and thank you for being here. Thank you, Peter. Well, I've often sat in this room various conferences. This, this, of course, is the central gathering place for intellectual discussion here in uh, Latvia. Um, uh, when there have been panels which have been described as high-level panels. Well, today we actually kick off this conference with the highest level panel we could uh, in Latvia. And I would like to invite onto the stage our first four speakers. Um, His Excellency, the President of Latvia, Prime Minister, 
Christians Karinsch, Foreign Minister Edgar Shrinkevich, and the Mayor of Riga, Martin Status. Gentlemen, if you could take the stage. So as you can see, I relocated to the little uh, 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 pedestal over here, leaving this one available for the gentleman. And then to kick off um, the discussion or the presentations, I would like to give the floor to His Excellency, the President of Latvia, Egils Levis. Uh, Your Excellencies, Prime Minister, our ministers, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear compatriots and Latvians, I'm really honored uh, to open uh, World Latvian Economics and Innovation Forum for fourth time, and I'm really happy to welcome every one of you. This year marks 10 years since the first forum and its organization and the forum itself has become a tradition which should be continued and therefore I would like to thank uh, the World Federation of Free Latvians, uh, thank you to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and everyone who has been participating and joining their efforts for organization of the forum. Many of you present here in the room are staying abroad for your professional careers, but in your domicile countries, in your domicile cities and towns and uh, jobs and employment, employers, you still are informal ambassadors of Latvia and this contribution is highly appreciated and it is very crucial and important for us uh, in Latvia. I uh, would like to extend my gratitude for your time uh, invested and ideas provided for strengthening Latvia. Economic development of Latvia will both depend on external factors, external circumstances and uh, action of everyone which would be and might be correct or wrong. Uh, Russia's uh, war and aggression against Ukraine uh, is uh, very dreadful, but uh, we will support Ukrainians as long as it is necessary for Ukraine to win over Russia. And in many sectors of economics, we have also endured some difficulties as the energy resources uh, system and the market, as well as the disruptions in uh, supply chains and delivery chains, as well as ever high inflation. And to share to our potential investors, we have to state and prove that uh, Latvia is a safe place for investment, as uh, Professor of uh, University of Latvia, uh, Mr. Daunis mentioned, we are an island of stability in Europe, and that message should be also delivered to potential investors. And every one of you might be of great support in that sense. Global challenges also for Latvia constitutes a climate change which may not be strived and also conquered as well as managed by every country alone and separately. Therefore, we must really join our forces for uh, reducing our emissions and uh, preserving and uh, biological diversity, biodiversity. A transformation to uh, economics without fossil energy in European Union has been devoted significant funds and Green Deal is very uh, much in the interest of Latvia and our interest includes not resisting but quite opposite be the first and leaders and pioneers in this transformation who is the first to come the first gets floor as Latvian saying goes 
It is really our interest of our economy and our safety. Latvia currently is producing almost half of its uh, energy consumption from renewables, but we still con uh, should continue our investment in uh, wind energy, in hydropower plants for us to increase uh, the sheer and power uh, capacity of green energy and turn into exporters of green energy in the future. I consider that Latvia has and holds that potential to lead and manage transformation faster than uh, at average speed in Europe, and we should mobilize that potential and really strengthen it as well as to use it to the fullest. And I think that transformation of economics is possible only if we invest in science, research, innovation, and transmission, transfer of innovation to production and exports. We already have various innovation plans and strategies, but we still lack a clear action plan for increasing our ranking in European and global innovation indexes. And this is what Additional and primary attention should be paid to by state institutions and by the public at large. <clears throat> and also the investment by public and private sector in research and development are not sufficient yet. At the same time, there are stories of success both in science and in companies and enterprises in Latvia. We are capable of securing and providing uh, the technologies for international space research missions. We have excellent infrastructure and development in 5G technologies, and we are a world-recognized experts in quant technology, and there are several uh, examples of that prove and testify for our huge potential and as i've mentioned before quantum technology is the technology of the future and it will take only approximately five to six years for quantum uh, um, technology to take over the lead and so we must really use that time quite wisely and reasonable, reasonably for infrastructure to be ready as previous infrastructure will not fit too well for quantum, technolo quantum technologies. We know that already and we must start thinking about that and to act to be ready and prepared for launching those technologies. In general, the innovation and development of economics lies on and is based on science and edu education. And human and people are the center of education and I'm not so keen in calling people a capital, a human capital, because people are people, identities, personalities, and are individual, uh, unique individuals. We really need very talented people who feel belonging to Latvia, Latvianness, and Latvian culture. I would like to wish you very fruitful discussions and success for development of Latvia. Thank you very much for your attention. And I would like to wish you a very interesting plenum. Thank you. Paldies, President. Thank you. Your Excellency, Mr. President. I have already failed in one of my first tasks of moderation, which was to let would be in English, but I think that became apparent. Now, we move on to our next speaker. Now, I was speaking about political stability, um, uh, of which Latvia really is a leader in Europe now. Well, our next speaker really is a visualization. He brings this to life, because uh, Prime Minister Karin is not just the first Latvian Prime Minister in Latvia's history to serve a full term, and not just a full term, but be re-elected and continue in office. But I had a 
uh, a quick look around uh, the data on countries in, yeah, let's give him some applause. But not just that, um, if we look around the Nordic Baltic re region, taking out Iceland because it's far away, uh, Prime Minister Karin is the longest serving Prime Minister in our region now, something we've never been able to say about a Latvian Prime Minister before. Um, so really, uh, Prime Minister Karin, you're the grand old man of Northern Europe. So with that, um, I give the floor to you. Thank you. Good morning. Latvian English. How's on, on, English? Okay. Um, uh, it's 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 a fine feeling for the first time to be called a grand old man. I, I'll, I'll focus on the grand aspect of that. Um, but there is always a fine line between stability and stagnation. Uh, I'm quite well aware of that as I'm sitting. Uh, was sitting next to uh, President Levitz and Foreign Minister Rinkevich, it struck me that I'll probably be the first Prime Minister who is now going into his third president. Uh, usually presidents go into their third and fourth prime ministers. Um, so it's, it's somewhat odd to reflect. But uh, a few words um, on where I think uh, our country is headed and where I'm convinced uh, we have to go. Uh, I have instigated a lot of people are talking about the, a broad economic transformation. I'm sort of tickled as a politician. Everyone started to speak about this because no one understands what it means, so everyone puts their own interpretation, which is, is actually part of the exercise, actually, um, to think about what is it that we need to do basically to get to the next level, very simply put. Um, there's one uh, uh, indicator that I'm keeping my eye on, which is the percent of high value-added exports as a proportion of our GDP. And we simply want to grow that, very simply. We want to grow one little number, high value-added uh, exports. Now, that sounds easy, um, and governments don't grow exports, companies do. So what can governments do is create the conditions where it becomes ever more interesting uh, and uh, uh, profitable to do that from Latvia. So the first is, uh, well, Latvia. Uh, we're all very well aware of where we are in the world and who our neighbor is and what our neighbor is doing in Ukraine. Uh, so is this a safe place? And the short answer is yes, ironically, uh, we have probably never been safer in our country than we are uh, today in spite of the geopolitical turmoil around us. And why is that? Because we have joined not only the European Union but the NATO Military Alliance. And NATO, uh, since the first uh, Russian incursions into Ukraine in 2016, has been stepping up and ever increasing its own physical presence in the Baltic countries in Latvia. So we have not only the Latvian army, which we are increasing in size and capacity. We are now it's the day number, five, day number four of the reintroduced conscription. Positive sign, we had many more volunteers than we had places. So our conscription is actually on a volunteer basis. We're actually hoping that this uh, could uh, stick out uh, into the future as well. This will build up an active and prepared and trained and equipped reserve, which will increase uh, uh, physical manpower uh, at any given time. We're going towards the, the, the Finnish uh, model of total uh, uh, defense. But on top of that, we have 10 NATO countries uh, who are present in Latvia, headed by the Canadians, plus the Danes are here, plus the Americans are here on a, a complete, they call it the heel-to-toe rotational basis, always different capacities, which means each time a new, uh, new unit or units come in, the, the, the training uh, for our soldiers increases. So we have a very robust, and it will become ever more robust, military and NATO presence here, with Finland and Sweden joining. 
The Baltic Sea will effectively become a NATO lake, which is, is going to make our region one of the most secure in the world, uh, in spite of our neighbor Russia, or you could say because uh, of our neighbor Russia. So is it safe? Absolutely. Okay, put that aside. Is it interesting? Of course it's interesting. Uh, uh, we still have, uh, and as a, as a nation that still feels itself to be young, and when you're young you really have to prove something, uh, we still have a very large national appetite for being better than our neighbors, better than our competition. We're constantly comp comparing ourselves and, and sometimes shooting ourselves in the foot saying, oh, they do this better, they do that better. But just as in sports, a country of 2 million, okay, 1.8 million, uh, can beat the United States, can go head to head with Canada, and uh, end up being right now the third uh, strongest uh, uh, hockey team in the world. It's a reflection of how individuals uh, coming together as teams, how we act. If you look across the world of sports, I'm continually amazed at how much excellence we have in such varied areas. You'd think a small country, you just, you know, focus on one thing and hope, hope to hell that you can do something. But we don't do that. We go across the board, and actually, the excellence across the board is as well. And in the business world, the fascinating thing is that we're not putting all of our money, all, all of our cards on just one thing. You know, we're going to be a country of physicists, or a country of chemists, or a country of, of uh, computer specialists, or that. Uh, we are putting uh, the eggs into the broad basket of a well-educated uh, society. We have a long ways to go. In the university system, we have about 25% of our students are studying in the STEM uh, subjects. This is very positive. This is what, uh, what business needs. What we need is simply more people. We, you know, not necessarily a bigger percentage, but we simply need more people. So one of the discussions that I'm having with my friendly partners in my wonderful coalition government uh, is what can we do about addressing the fact that we simply need more people in our country? Uh, and uh, it's a tough issue because it touches on the word migration, which to some people is anathema, but it is absolutely a prerequisite. Uh, to ensure uh, future growth. And we'll solve uh, the issue, no questions about that. Uh, but uh, uh, the pieces are there. We are investing, as a government, ever more money uh, into uh, uh, education, uh, science, R&D. We have a long way to go. Uh, for years, we had massive underinvestment. Now we're starting the catch-up game. We're still underinvested, but I can say that from a the government's point of view, and it's a consensual view across politics, this money will grow up. So as companies coming in, you'll see the government coming ever more forward uh, in investments uh, to make, to make uh, the, you know, the business case uh, more interesting. Um, healthcare, the healthcare system, uh, uh, compared to uh, some parts of the world, it's excellent compared to others. You know, you always find things that are missing. Uh, monies are going into this, the system is being reformed, it will all the time be improving. Uh, we know that our doctors are top-notch because they're being picked uh, to serve uh, and work all over uh, Europe and the world. Uh, we have specialists from Latvia who go around teaching how to do the latest heart surgery uh, and teaching others around the world how to do that. So it's not a question of specialists, it's a question of how effective is the system all around? So for, for top-level healthcare, Latvia is a destination where we also, you know, it's, it's an export uh, industry to some extent. Uh, but uh, the system is being improved to make sure that that healthcare reaches not only the well-connected, uh, but that it is uh, broadly available throughout society. Uh, we, in the last uh, uh, parliamentary term, we uh, did a massive uh, reform of, of uh, local governments. We had over 100 and 110. We're down to about 40 right now of, uh, in the regions. So we're concentrating all of our growth, uh, economic growth, uh, provision of services, healthcare, education, 
in regional centers. Also readjusting our, our physical, our road infra infrastructure to do that. Kind of readjusting to the reality that we are a country of under two million people uh, with an infrastructure inherited from one which is, is slated to be well over three uh, in, in the Soviet times. So the changes are coming uh, all the time. Uh, the transformation is occurring. Uh, I, I love to spend my Fridays traveling around, meeting various companies, being completely amazed at how the diversity of, of the areas where there is excellence. I remember reading as a kid that in the 1930s, Latvia used to produce airplanes. And I thought, boy, that, you know, that's fantastic. We used to produce uh, airplanes. Well, guess what? We're, re we're producing airplanes again. Uh, uh, we have at least one company which is doing this. The armed forces are buying into them. They have a hell of a business case. I think they have a hell of a case for, for uh, uh, seeking uh, increased uh, investment into their company. They found a hell of a business niche, if I can make a little uh, advertisement for them. In military training, training surface and, and air troops, you need a plane in the sky. And F-16s cost uh, upwards to 6,000 uh, euros per flight hours, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we manufacture planes in our country that cost under 100. It's a hell of a business case, and it has all the same capacities uh, as the, the uh, very expensive fighter planes. And you, 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 you look at, at the incredible creativity of people here. Uh, we are a country and a nation of innovators. Uh, this is absolutely true. And I hear it again and again and again from investors coming from the outside, is one of the things that they find so positive here are that people have a very open mindset, open to trying things differently. Because maybe we don't have the benefit of having it inherited the way it's always been done. Uh, we're always thinking, how can we do it differently and better? So in this farm, I wish all of you, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the best of success, meeting one another, getting the contact. For those of you who are thinking of an, an investing, get in. The getting in is still very, very, very good. For those of you thinking, boy, maybe I can, you know, continue my career here, do it. It's a fantastic place to live. I can say this as someone who's not lived his entire life uh, in this country. Uh, I cannot imagine wanting to live uh, anywhere else, uh, also having the opportunity. Uh, so this is a vibrant place. It's a safe and stable place. And in spite of its rather potentially stagnant politics, because it's stable, um, I'm doing my damnedest to, con to uh, keep us as a dynamic and nimble government. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prime Minister. I have to admit, after Saturday's television interview, I'm, I'm a little disappointed there was no song at the end, but I suppose we will, uh, we will proceed. So when it comes to uh, politics in Latvia, and of course, the gentlemen on the stage know this better than anyone else, there, there are all kinds of arguments about tax rates, about the direction of um, uh, European Union structural fund spending, where it should go, how it should go, and so on. All these domestic issues are disputed. But when it comes to foreign policy, this is an area which is undoubtedly largely uncontested because our foreign policy over the last 30 years has been so successful, so stable, not stagnant, and, uh, but, but very, very stable. And for the last decade plus, of course, it's been managed by our foreign minister, who is our next speaker, and he'll be speaking in Latvian. Uh, the floor is yours, please, Foreign Minister Rinkevich. Dear friends, Your Excellencies, uh, President of Latvia, Mayor of Riga, so we have reached the situation where everything has been already said and there is no space to repeat. On my behalf, I can totally agree to the previously uh, spoken and mentioned by the President of Latvia and Prime Minister of Latvia regarding challenges and directions 
what we should work on on my behalf on behalf of minister Minister of Foreign Affairs up to now, I would like to mention that as it is very interesting to observe the development of forum itself. We started 10 years ago and we started our com very close cooperation with uh, the World Federation of uh, Free Latvians and uh, Mr. Bloomberg's already mentioned Mr. Kukainis, who unfortunately has passed away uh, some month ago. But uh, seeing how the forum has developed, expanded and evolved, and uh, that uh, representatives of our Latvian diaspora in uh, 25 countries have gathered together to the forum. Uh, they are regularly coming, arriving in Latvia and exchanging their ideas, business ideas, which are also implemented and introduced. And this is one of the cooperation mechanisms between the state Republic of Latvia and diaspora representatives, which is really working. And I'm happy that another a well working mechanism has derived, and that is the forum taking place in the United States, which will be hold, held in September this year as well and we have succeeded in establishing various uh, working formats and working mechanisms and i hope that we will have a lot of new ideas and good messages today as well taking a look at a modern world on one side I am gladly talking and the Prime Minister also would like to see many compatriots coming and moving back to Latvia and working and living here. Of course, a person can work even in Antarctic or Antarctica. The only thing needed is fast or broadband internet to connect any place in the world. But on in my opinion, it is not so important where a person is working and what they are doing, but the most important is that we all together are working in the favor and in the interests of our country. And uh, it happened that this is the 10th year when forum is gathering uh, panelists and participants. And it was also mentioned already that Prime Minister has uh, led his days in his position for many years. And I, this is almost 12th year for me as a Minister of Foreign Affairs in some days which will change uh, to the position of uh, the president of Latvia and I would like to extend my gratitude as the Minister of Foreign Affairs for our cooperation and for the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs and organizers of Forum because Forum is very successful and I would like to extend my gratitude to ambassadors and heralds of diasporas uh, to uh, Ms. Uh, Gava and also our cooperation partners. And I truly hope that we will continue that cooperation in different capacities and roles, for myself at least, and we will continue our cooperation for our country and our welfare and prosperity of our public and society. And in this uh, week, under the auspice of a song and dance festival, please ch exchange good ideas, but please take a stance uh, for singing or dancing, because we will not move forward quite much only with business. But we need also some leisure and some culture, cultural traditions to preserve. Here, of course, we're here in Riga, because Riga is and will be uh, the powerhouse of uh, the Latvian economy that drives us forward in the future. And I think over the last couple of years, we have seen undoubtedly 
some huge improvements in the city's competitiveness, and of course, in no small part, thanks to Mayor Stachis. So now I'd like to invite Mayor Stachis to take the stage. I was going to ask our president. Your Excellencies, uh, President of Latvia, Prime Minister. So, my family was going through the tough time. One of my close relatives had announced that their family was planning to leave Latvia. They said that while living abroad, their children could get a better education, they could have more career opportunities, and they could live a better life. And uh, I was sad because I knew that if I could, I would do anything to make them stay. So I'm sure many of you have a similar stories. Stories where we would want our friends, relatives, or ourselves to live right here in Riga, to have the same career opportunities, to be able to get an education and a higher standard, to live in a vibrant, in a modern, in a wealthy city. And this is the main reason why attracting investments was a top priority for me as a mayor. Not just because investments sound good or because I could score some political points. It was because I truly believed that this was an opportunity for me. An opportunity to help build the type of city where our diaspora does not only come during the song and dance festival but the type of the city where they would want to live, work, and return to. So during my time in business, I spent a lot of time traveling around the world. And I was always impressed when I saw people who loved to talk about their countries, about their home cities. So today, as I stand before you for the last time as the mayor of Riga, I want to ask for a small favor. When you are abroad, talk about Latvia and Riga. Mention everything good that, this, that is happening here. Be the ambassadors who truly believe that Riga and Latvia can become the type of place where everyone in the world would be happy to live in. And I know that this is a big ask from me. I'm the mayor who has resigned and who will be removed from the office about one hour from now. But I know that we all want the same thing, for Riga to become a city that you can be proud of. So I'm sorry if my speech sounded a bit sad. It wasn't meant to be, and I'm not sad. I'm happy to be here today, and I'm happy that we can celebrate how far the city has come. And I'm hopeful toward the future of Riga and Latvia. Because I know that all over the world, we have people who want us to succeed. And I know that everyone who is here today is one of them. So thank you for that. Welcome back and have a nice celebration. Well, I think it's pretty clear that your work is appreciated, Mayor Stachis, and thank you for finding the time to come these last hours in office to come here. It would have been easy to skip out and stay across the river, but thank you so much for coming here. And I'd like uh, everybody to give a, a warm round of applause to our panel as they now exit the stage and we prepare for the next one. So thank you very much. Okay, so I have some housekeeping issues which I just want to go through quite quickly now before we move on to our next uh, macroeconomics panel. So, uh, the first thing to mention is that there will be an opportunity to ask questions to the following panels that we have before lunch. Uh, we do it through Slido. Now, I, I'm, yeah, here we go. So, uh, you can scan the QR code over here or enter the code over there. 
and you can uh, participate in the discussion, uh, ask questions, and we will try to get those questions to the panelists. Time is tight, there's a lot to, uh, to say, there's a lot to discuss, but we'll do our best to try to uh, uh, get those directed at the panelists. Um, there is a short coffee break that comes up after this uh, panel. Please, let's keep it short because we have a tight schedule, so the coffee is over there. I suggest an espresso rather than a cappuccino. Um, uh, uh, and then please uh, uh, come back for our second panel. And then, of course, we have a lunch, and the lunch is in the uh, Cleaved restaurant, sort of at the other end. We have to walk through the long corridor to the other side of the library for our uh, probably very, very tasty lunch. Um, and then, of course, after the lunch, we have our breakout rooms um, where you will have the opportunity to go and, and, and listen to some more in-depth sectoral uh, level discussions uh, about the directions of Latvia's economy. And I don't think I've missed anything out this time, but I probably have. But those are the main things. For us now, I would like to invite uh, the chair of the next panel, who is an old, old friend of mine. And I was wondering which, short, which story I should share with you. Will it be the story of Kaliningrad in 1995 with a flamenco dancer? Or some other, well, I decided probably best not to mention any of those. Um, instead, just give a, uh, a brief introduction that Morton Hansen, has been living in Latvia for almost 30 years. He's the head of the economics department at the Stockholm School of Economics. He writes a fantastic blog in English for the ID magazine, which in, in, uh, with simple graphics and simple language explains very complicated, controversial issues in uh, uh, macroeconomics. And of course, because Morton is a, a professor, he likes to talk. So we're going to begin with a presentation from Morton, sketching in the macroeconomic trends of the um, uh, Latvian economy in a comparative perspective, um, essentially since uh, independence. And Morton has promised to keep that short. Let's see if that, that happens. And then he will introduce his panel, and, and uh, uh, he'll kick off a discussion. And I will reappear at some point if we have some Slido questions to ask. But otherwise, uh, I'd like to give the floor to my friend, the Danish economist, Morten Hansen. Morten, please. Thank you very much for this kind introduction, and thank you very much for inviting me here today. And Downers, don't worry, I will actually be short. Again, back to your uh, introduction, I remember when you introduced the Prime Minister, grand old man, uh, it seems that the focus with respect to me is more on old than grand, but there we are, right? What I in intend to do with, with my short presentation here is it's just a warm up uh, for, for the panel that we have uh, afterwards. So I have four slides that I would like to show for you. I will speak for about four minutes and I will have four sort of key messages uh, for you. Here's the first message that I would like to give, something I guess we're all very much aware of, but, but still try to think about the following. Latvia is a member of all these uh, organizations. And if we sort of start thinking about, but how many countries actually are members of all of those, then it's not very many. It's just about a little bit more than a couple of handfuls. Right. This is very, very deep institutional integration that Latvia has been doing consistently since day one of uh, independence back in 1991. Institutions that represent the free market, free trade, democracy, and so forth. This is an institutional level that is on par with countries like Germany, Netherlands, Italy, France. It's deeper than Sweden. Sweden is not in the Eurozone, for instance, and as we all know, they're very much scrambling to get into NATO. My country of passport, Denmark, is not in the Eurozone either. Czech Republic, Hungary, and so on, not in the Eurozone, etc., etc. This is very, very deep uh, integration. So institutionally speaking, this country is perfectly uh, placed uh, to sort of create economic growth via the market economy has also been very successful. Um, 
Here I take the development in income per person. I do it at constant prices. So basically, how much richer is the average Latvian since 1995, uh, the first time we can get reasonably comparable data. So from 1995 to 2022, what we have is that in terms of the EU 27 countries, uh, the three Baltic ones have been the most successful ones. And my second message here is that, yeah, look at Latvia, it's almost 250% growth in average income. That is not just growth, that's transformation of a country. This country is not, it's not the same that I came to back in 1993. It's completely different from now. So in that sense, we should say definitely big success. I should also, because that was what I was asked to do, take a look at the past 10 years, uh, given that uh, this forum uh, started out 10 years ago. When we then look at it there, again, income per person changes over the past 10 years, then it looks, message number three, yes, very good, but perhaps a little bit less excellent uh, than it did for the whole period. Should we say there has been some sort of slowdown in the Latvian economy, or in the growth of the economy, possibly yes. Certainly something that is worth uh, speculating about, and that's what I hope to do with my panel in, in just a minute or two. And my fourth um, message comes from this one. Sorry if, if the graphs are a little bit close to each other. But if we make a comparison over time with countries, yeah, then we have that the three Baltic countries, they are, in terms of income per person, they are the three richest of the former uh, Soviet Union countries. Latvia overtook, as I have there, to overtook Russia already back in 2014, has created a gap uh, in income per person of, of no less than 15% by now. I, but then again, as I also point out with this one, we're 22% behind the Lithuanians, and some 18, 20% behind the Estonians. And I know that in this country, we are very fond of bronze medals, but uh, um, <laughs> could, yeah. could, could, could we at least perhaps, yeah, it, it, it's not a contest of the course is here, right? But it's worth thinking about, but why, why is it that we are behind the Lithuanians and the Estonians, and why is it that it has always been like that? And I think that is, is also something that is worth thinking about in terms of the future, in terms of the future growth uh, of, of this country. So those were the four slides and the four messages that I have, right? Institutionally, this country has done all that it should. Over the whole period since independence, it's been super successful in terms of growth, but a little bit is perhaps has been lacking past 10 years. It's been good, but not as stellar as in the whole period. And then it's, we have this issue of that we are still lacking behind uh, Estonians and Lithuanians, right? So perhaps that's something we can also address in the panel that I have uh, been asked to, to uh, moderate. And I would like to invite my, my panelists to, to, uh, to the stage. Uh, what we have in the, this panel will be Minister of Finance, Avil Vlasjoratens. We will have Slata Elksninja Sashirinska, uh, chairperson of the Foreign Investors Council in Latvia, and also managing partner at PwC. And we have Nils Mellengeils from the uh, uh, Luminor Bank. So please join me on the stage, and I will set out, while you are coming up here, set out yeah, my little bit conservative rules for running such a panel. Um, we have roughly 45 minutes uh, for this here panel. I would like my panelists, and I think in the order I just presented them, to outline some five, maximum seven minutes, two, three issues where they would say, hey, this is where I think we have possibilities for economic growth. But it could also be, but here's another bullet that says, but here is where, where I think that e economic growth is held back, because that is just as important uh, to discuss for us, uh, I would think. So I will just uh, relocate, it seems to be to the far end over there, so uh, we start in about half a minute. Thank you very much. It's 
seems to be on. No, yeah, it is on, good. Uh, but as I mentioned then, yeah, Minister Asheratens, perhaps you would like to start five, seven minutes, two, three bullets. Don't give us all your insights right, at, right, at, right away, but the uh, floor is yours. Uh, well, <laughs> I would like to start with the stability issue. And uh, as I said, uh, it's, as was already said here, is, uh, Latvia has already overpassed, uh, uh, I might say, not overpassed, but already uh, facing, but successfully fighting with one, two, uh, one past and still fighting with two very complicated crises. One was COVID and we passed it very good and we learned our lessons and uh, we were, if we compare with 90, situation with 98, we were able to save our economy and, and come out of this uh, quite successfully and, and re-establish growth. Uh, second, of course, is uh, uh, geopolitical security crisis and, and uh, and as Prime Minister said, Latvia is already on the safe side here, but of course we have a, 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 a lot of economical impact here, uh, like energy sector crisis and, and all others, but uh, Latvia managed it so far very well. Uh, and other one, what, uh, what we're having on the horizon here, that's global, that's inflation. Uh, there we uh, uh, struggling uh, with more difficult uh, situation, uh, with more uh, more uh, more bigger complexities than others, but uh, we already see the light at the end of tunnel with with that. And and of course, another important issue to mention is uh, uh, government, uh, the state have uh, uh, how to say state uh, state have a very a good macroeconomic stability. Uh, we have a very good sovereign debt, which is in level of 40%. And if you look on, on gross perspective, if you look on our government stability program, uh, we see already we uh, act in, uh, our development prospects looks better than other Baltic states. It's 1.4 this year, what we expected. And, and we are ready to, how to say, come back to moderate growth for next three, four years to in, in level Two point, uh, let's say, two point five, set three percent GDP growth per annum. Uh, that could be basic, stable. Uh, but uh, and then a lot of things happen under surface. And uh, and uh, as the Prime Minister already mentioned, uh, there is a lot of things going on in order to reach the next level. And uh, what the government uh, or the Prime Minister is called economical transformation. And, and there I would like to mention uh, just a couple of things where we're really heading in order to change uh, all, um, uh, all macroeconomical environment. Number one is education. Yeah. Uh, what the, what we going on uh, fundamental reform and it's it's already start giving fundamental fruits that is higher education uh, higher ed educational system reform. Uh, let's say uh, five years ago we had uh, 56 high schools very fragmented with no clear goals where they're going and, and what will happen. Now we have a system with four, uh, as a backbone of our education uh, system, uh, four scientific universities, uh, technical universities, Stradinch University, Latvian State University, and Latvian School of, uh, University of Bioeconomics uh, in Yalgava. And those four schools creating around uh, themselves uh, uh, scientific, uh, scientific university ecosystems where we consolidated all of uh, all other uh, scientific educational institutions, and we already see a lot of results happening here. Uh, then uh, other issue, what is there is an, uh, where we, what is government already addressed, and, and particularly those weeks we're discussing that is. Uh, labor market, that is fundamental issue again. Uh, we have uh, two things. One is uh, shortage of labor market and the problem is uh, if, uh, if we speak in the terms of uh, per persons, being, uh, uh, persons living in Latvia, that is 1.8 million. If we're looking on employed persons, the problem we uh, lost the balance, we're going be uh, below 900, what is say should normally in every country should a minimum half work and, and, and helps uh, another half, let's say children and elderly people. We're going below that and if we look deeper then we say we're already on level 880 and, and then we see 
there's a big group of uh, uh, immigrants already working in Latvia, and right now we have to reestablish this balance. That's number one. Second, of course, is uh, by the uh, fundamental change in different e economical sectors. We have to invest, uh, or we already investing, and 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 and, and developing system how to uh, educate. Uh, uh, people and, uh, and how to investing in human capital in Latvia. And other big uh, change uh, that is capital market. Uh, I would say uh, so far Latvia didn't put very big attention to it. Uh, uh, then it's say uh, our capitalization level is 3%. Uh, uh, government set the goal in next three years to uh, develop, uh, to, to grow up to 9% and so go up higher. And, and that, of course, is fundamental change. That uh, and, and that's uh, we foresee the state, big state enterprises. Uh, the partially, uh, the partly, they will be uh, put on IPO and uh, keeping uh, control control over. Uh, uh, the general uh, stock, uh, the government uh, uh, will uh, will put them floating in a stock exchange, and and already uh, we preparing a society for how to say be active on capital markets uh, like uh, uh, like uh, say treasury start uh, to sell uh, saving bonds. Uh, our aim is uh, sell them a level 500 million. Uh, we already selling per working day close to, to 1.72 million uh, saving bonds and people reacting uh, very nicely. And, and there is good fundament for that is if you look on savings, what we have in, in people accounts in Latvia, that is between 10 and 11 billion euros. And if you look on pension funds, there's again is a good ground for, for capital market development here. And of course, we would like to attract foreign investment here. Uh, on other, uh, other fundamental issues is what is important for economy and, 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 and societal development. Those are, are human rights issues uh, like uh, Istanbul Convention, uh, uh, rights from one gender couple to live together, and, and, and of course that's not worth uh, why, you, why we mention here, but it is, it is very important to in develop harmonic society and an inclusive society in order to achieve, uh, achieve uh, growth. And last one, what I say, it is we're focusing right now on government efficiency. There is going on a government reform on efficient government, and of course we can uh, look into this deeply, but, uh, but I would say uh, there is a lot going on right now in order to reach, as the Prime, Prime Minister said, next level. But one thing, but of course, what is lacking, uh, that is, uh, I, I, would, I would define that is specialization of this country. If we look at Estonians, they said, oh, well, we would like to focus on uh, perfect, uh, perfect uh, digital governance, and, and they succeeded, and that gave them the, the, the how to say, the force to to to, to be uh, on a level what they are. Estonia, uh, Lithuanians, they were uh, they were focusing on business services, and, and they were they Lit Vilnius want to be a capital business service. That is a missing part of the of the Latvian economical policies policies the specialization. Thank you. Thanks a lot indeed. And yeah. I asked for three issues and I got five at least. But uh, very good. No, no, it's, it's fine and it's within time and so on. I can see there's a lot developing on Slido. Uh, I'm just wondering how we, how we manage. Uh, one way to manage is that I shut up. So Slata, please, uh, let's hear from you. More from the private sector, I would imagine. First words. I'm trying to understand whether the microphone is on. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, it's hard to say more than already was said before. Yeah, and uh, I will try to continue. Uh, as a Foreign Investors Council, every year we are putting uh, a lot of uh, sort of uh, issues uh, on the government shoulders. And, every, uh, and actually, I'm very happy to be here right now uh, and actually recognize that a lot of the things which we have been talking for five to six years already are resonating with the whole society. This is the public sector reform. Uh, this is the uh, high education reform. We are talking about the energy security. And I think 
What I really would like to bring is, uh, do you know that our country, Latvia, could be a net green energy exporter, more than Estonia and more than Lithuania as a whole? What we need to do is just to go from you know, the plants, which we are very good at, we are actually, I think we have, a, it's like a tradition, it's like Latvian tradition to have a lot of plants. Uh, and we need to finally to realize those plants which we have, just to go from the words into the actions and be clear what we want to achieve. And I think everything what we heard about the transformation, uh, economical transformation, it is true. I think we are ahead of the big things if we really act on them. And uh, here I think we, each of us has our own task to do in terms of reach out those goals. Niels, yeah, I have this feeling we're going to hear something about, about banking. It's just just a gut feeling, but uh, please. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, no, actually. Um, <laughs> I want to avoid that if I can, but I see all the questions. Why aren't you issuing more loans to me? And yeah. um, So I'll, I'll get to that later. Um, no, thank, thanks, uh, thanks for having me on the panel, and it's great to see everybody. There's so many old friends I have uh, who are here. I've, I've been living in Latvia in Europe for the last uh, 30 years, and uh, Zlata and I actually used to work together. We, we founded Coopers and Librand exactly 30 years ago, and um, it's great to be on a panel with you, and great to see that you're the managing partner now, so um, super. I, um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to maybe focus on you know, two, two investor um, perspectives and, and you know, what success stories, I think. You know, one of them is Luminor. Uh, so we'll talk about banking, but more from an investor perspective. Um, and I think the, the need for us to start really, I really agree with, uh, with Mayor Stotjes that we need to really market Riga as a regional center and not focus too much on, on Latvia. La Latvia is a relatively small country. Um, you know, we should start focusing on, you know, uh, presenting ourselves as the center of a larger region, including Estonia and Lithuania. Um, and, and um, you know, really uh, ensure that we, we, we provide the framework, the, the, the tax, the, the, you know, the, the tax framework, uh, the legislative framework uh, to enable companies or incentivize them to come here. I mean, you know, one of the advantages that Estonia had because it went with its digital, um, digital uh, government was that it was much easier for companies to establish themselves and, and they attracted a lot of foreign companies and now you know it's, it's no it's no surprise that, that there are a lot of global companies a lot, lot of them startups of course um, based based in Estonia because of that um, but in in, uh, in the case of Luminor um, you know DNB and Nordea who are the original owners of uh, the branches which comprise Luminor they they were trying to exit the market it wasn't a strategic for them anymore um, but they couldn't get the price they wanted so they decided to merge all of their, you know, the six banks they had, two in each country, to create Luminor, and um, and literally doubled the value of that of that business, just as a result of that transaction. And then we, we succeeded to get uh, Blackstone, um, which is the largest private equity fund in the world, to, to invest over a billion euros of equity in, into the business. So um, they've made a very big bet on the region, and I think that bodes well for for other investors. Um, but I think what it says is that you know businesses really need to be at least Baltic. Uh, preferably go global um, to, to really reach these objectives that we'd like to have in terms of creating Riga and, and Latvia as, as, a, as an economic center. Um, in the other case, um, you know, the reason I'm not wearing a tie today is because I also work with Printful, uh, where people wear t-shirts most of the time, so I have to dress in between somehow. And um, that, that's a case where, that's a case where um, you know, the, the, it's a very successful company. Primarily the business is in the clients are in the U.S. primarily, but um, even after you know, a, a very significant uh, uh, investment was made by, by an American uh, investment fund, uh, it, even now we continue to hire and, and base most of the, the headquarters staff in Riga because it's, it, we've realized that it's actually very competitive in terms of costs and quality of staff. 
Um, Shardab is 6 non, so we'll tell you more about it later today. He's, he, he built a company and um, you know, you should be very proud of, of Printful in terms of bringing Latvia out, outside of um, uh, the region. So I think the lesson is really to, to be ambitious. Um, you know, the companies need to be ambitious. You have to have regional strategies to, to succeed. Um, and I think finally, we should also not forget Ukraine. Um, I was recently appointed as, as chairman of Privat Bank, which is um, the largest, uh, the, the largest commercial bank in, in, uh, in Ukraine. Um, it's also, obviously, you know, the, the, the whole system is, is under stress right now. But uh, the reason they did that is that you know they, they also want to learn from our um, banking restructuring and, and reforms in, 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 in Latvia and Europe more broadly. And I think as businesses also, we should look at Ukraine as a market um, very close to us. You know, thanks to our foreign policy and our relationships, uh, it's, it's wide open for us. It's, a, it's not a very safe place today, but um, it will be someday. And, you know, there will be a lot of money flowing in. And, you know, I'd encourage businesses also to uh, use Latvia as a base to, to go into that market. And we should, you know, do everything we can, can to help Ukraine, but I think also uh, in, in the long term, it, it, it could also be, a, you know, benefit to us. So. Those are the main points I wanted to make at the outset. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. So if I took the last one there, so basically you find that Latvia has, or we, we, many here would have some sort of comparative advantage with respect to Ukraine. And no, I could agree on that. I, I come from the West myself, and the knowledge of Ukraine there is, is just very poor. Is that what you meant? Yeah, I think... Well, Historically, a lot of Latvian companies and banks invested in Ukraine, um, you know, because of a number of economic and, and transparency issues and political instability, it was very difficult. But I, you know, I personally believe that's going to change fundamentally uh, at, at the end of this war. And, and um, you know, I think it's, it certainly should be an opportunity and, and the door is wide open. Um, so I think in terms of competitive advantage, it's, it's probably easier for, for us to understand and support uh, businesses there than it might be for other European countries. Thanks. Um, as far as I could see, nobody really had anything to complain about with the Latvian economy, but well, we should, shouldn't we, at least? So what, what about taking a second round where, let's say, just give me one issue where you think, hey, this is where Latvia perhaps has failed or has been too slow or something that is holding back growth, but also feel free to comment on uh, what, what, what anyone else said. But again, just a few minutes, and then let's see what we can do with the Slido questions when we get there. But Minister, please. Uh, it's not so simple to say uh, nothing to complain is, uh, uh, well, uh, what the government do, and Minister of Finance do, we every year producing, uh, it's called it uh, uh, stability evaluation or economical stability evaluation. Uh, uh, document where we making our forecasts and 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 uh, what we find out is uh, uh, making this st uh, stability report uh, in this year as our uh, GDP potential uh, is is very low actually and uh, and and there is a, a let's say conflict with the general public opinion if you look uh, uh, what was uh, uh, feelings uh, were 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 this uh, second government of Mr. Karinch was formed, uh, oh, we so long lagging behind other Baltic countries. We would like to pick up them as fast as possible and to maybe be the number one. And uh, it's maybe not true, as, as, as you said, we all, always bronze medal lovers, and that's not in this case. And, and, and then, of course, if you look in uh, GDP potential, where we saw uh, there is a, uh, uh, we are in the situation where our uh, machine, what we have, our engine, is not so uh, strong as we would like to, or we would say our uh, GDP potential already lagging uh, between 2 or 3 percent. Yeah? And if we compare with Baltic states, if we want to pick up them, uh, that's not enough. Yeah? That's not enough. And then we have to really uh, make much faster structural changes. And number one is, say, labor. Uh, labor just start working as a negative component. That is uh, minus 0.10 percent. Then is uh, productivity still problematic on very low level. Uh, that is averagely 70 percent from Europe average. And foreign direct investment in a context of uh, geopolitical situation could be complicated. And that is, uh, how to say, what is it? 
that is a huge challenge for government, how to bring all ec overall economy to the next level where the GDP potential between, it could be not between 2 to 3 percent, but between 3 and 5 percent. Yeah, that is, <laughs> that is the main issue. And as if you say complaining, that is a, that's not about complaining, that is a challenge. That's a huge challenge. It's one of the most difficult things, if, if you ask me, definitely, yeah. Slata. Yeah. <clears throat> In the, uh, as a foreign investor council, we're doing every year the uh, foreign investor sentiment index. We're trying to understand what actually bothers uh, the foreign investors being here in Latvia. And actually, the things which we hear the most are, I should say, the three of them. One is um, around everything related to the labor market and the availabil uh, availability of labor, both uh, white colors and blue color workers. The second, what we are hearing is about uh, the fair competition. And this is uh, uh, a little bit goes together with the, um, you know, the uh, tax system as per se and the, uh, um, um, the, um, the way how we run our uh, tax regime and fairness in the tax system. And the third, probably, which is uh, related to, with the same, is the ability of the public sector to be effective. Because if we look on Latvian public sector, it is big. It does require a reform. It does require the efficiency even more than the private sector, because private sector is really adjusting a lot. Uh, to that. So those are the three things. The positive sign, although hearing all of this uh, from the foreign investors, when we ask the existing foreign investors in Latvia, are you going to invest in Latvia? And the like a two thirds of the companies who are foreign investor council members are saying yes. We are going to invest in Latvia, which is giving us the positive sign that actually the investors feel good here, but there is a lot of things internally which need to be done to be much better than we are currently. Yeah, I think um, generally things are going in the, in the right direction. I'll, I'll, com I'll complain about two or three things if that's okay. Um, so, one is, you know, I, I, know, that, I know that the legislative framework and, and the, the legal system is, is set up correctly, but, you know, I, th I think one thing that we're still uh, not really good at in terms of doing quickly is, is combating white-collar crime. You know, I think um, when I, I was running Parix, I left Parix in 2000, 2010, 12 years ago, and in my last day, I, I, I filed a claim against the former owners for a very large amount of money, which was supposed to go to the state. Um, and it took 12 years. We only won the case uh, this year. And, you know, something is not right if, if it takes 12 years for something like that to be, to be processed. So I think, you know, that, that's something that also, uh, you know, raises questions among investors, I think. In the region, and, and you know, if the court system in Estonia works better than the court system in Latvia, then you know, people will feel safer investing there. I imagine that's one of the reasons why Luminar is you know, headquartered there. Because, um, but I think things are, are moving in the right direction. A very good sign is that Swedbank decided to pick their regional headquarter in Riga, um, you know, which which shows that you know I think we've gotten over a lot of the anti-money laundering issues and, and so on. Um, I think the other the other uh, the other point is just to, to keep make sure that our politicians are careful not to um, be tempted by populism in some areas in terms of taxes. Um, you know, I, I'll talk about banking for a second. <laughs> um, you know, the, Lithuania passed a special tax on banks because uh, because of the rise in interest rates, banks are enjoying um, relatively high profits um, over the last year. It's it's a it's a temporary. Um, anomaly, you know, when, when, when most of our loans are, are floating, you know, so we, if those interest rates go up and they're fixed to the, um, to the euro rates, then uh, people, people pay more and, and banks profit and, you know, we're gradually increasing our deposit rates, we're reducing our margins, um, but I think people, um, and, and then it's very tempting to say, well, banks are making too much money, let's tax them. Um, and you know, if you look at if you look at it from Blackstone's point of view, or any investor who's, who's invested at the height of the AML crisis, actually, 
uh, you know, during COVID, we were banned from paying dividends uh, for a long, for you know, more than a year. Um, you know, we've had to invest in uh, a lot of systems. When, when sanctions are when sanctions are issued against Russia, it's the banks that have to implement them and invest great great deal. So there's a lot of things we have to do. Um, so notwithstanding that, it's not so much the issue that the banks couldn't afford to pay the tax. It's more a question of um, stability. And I think for the, for the investment community, it's you know, predictability and stability in some ways is more important than how many taxes you pay. You just want to be sure that you know what, what, what the playing field is and, and that it's a level playing field. And I, I think the last, the last point would be, I, I think there is an opportunity to very quickly improve governance in, in Latvia by uh, removing the need for supervisory council members to be um, classified as, as um, well, some of their you know, state, state employees, because that, that puts a lot of re reporting requirements on them. Uh, Ukraine is far ahead of Latvia in a sense. I mean, in the, the board at Privat Bank, you know, I chair it. We have six um, other international, very experienced bankers from all over Europe. Um, and, you know, I think we have to manage these state-owned enterprises or state-controlled enterprises as if they are in the private sector, because they do usually compete in the private sector, govern them that way, and I think we could also, you know, find it easier to expand internationally and also attract money when they do um, IPOs. So. I have more if you want. No. Of course you have. Of course you have. But glad to see that there are also places where Ukraine is ahead of us. Why not? Or? Yeah. What we're thinking about and then food for thought definitely. Many thanks to all of you who have been using Slido uh, except that it makes my life very complicated. Um, but I have tried to write down some of the questions and perhaps you also have been reading from it and so on. We're not going to be able to touch all, all of this here, right? Because uh, there's also a merciless clock there that's ticking down. It says 15 minutes and 37 seconds by now. But if I allow myself another round with something about employment, again, it was already mentioned, the employment rate in Latvia is not bad but it could still be better. I think it could go to, it's behind Swedish levels, but it's way above Italian levels, for instance. And we will need for the labor market, we need more people to work in the future. So how do we do that? Please include also, if you want to, migration. Don't perhaps use this term smart migration. We've talked about that many times, but how can we realistically perhaps get migration? It was also mentioned by the, the, the prime minister. Uh, and feel free also to this here that uh, also several people have been having, why is it the Lithuanians have been, you know, moving ahead from us in almost the past 10 years, right? Instead of us converging towards the Lithuanians, it's gone, gone the other way around. Lithuanians have moved farther and farther away from us. What have they done? Because I'm not quite sure that I know it. So three possibilities address what you would like to. Mr. Minister again, perhaps start out. Okay, let's start with employment. Uh, employment is uh, more, most complicated from all that issues what you are addressed here is, um, uh, let's say we have a very uh, low unemployment rate. Uh, then, uh, then we, as I said, we lost uh, balance between those who work and those who live on, on, on let's say, uh, that as others working, and, and, and then of course, uh, is a, is a, let's say the highest problem here is uh, actually uh, we not always exactly lacking people, we lacking competence or those who know how to do. And, and of course, by OECD, uh, the evaluation is uh, of the structure of Latvian economy, uh, the judgment is in, in, uh, in the decades, uh, something like around 65 or 70 percent professions will disappear and new will, new will appear. And that's mean state has to invest a lot in, uh, uh, in a lot in, um, in adult education, adult training, and, and the size of the e process is much higher than private sector could afford it. Yeah. And of course, uh, the uh, 
the big uh, chunk of uh, national, let's say, or national it's European funds uh, envelope is devoted to that. Uh, there's some somewhere uh, close to one billion euros are related to this issue. The question is how to better coordinate that. Yeah, invest in 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 human uh, human skills. Uh, according uh, to Fontes research, and we had confirmed it's the state uh, uh, state revenue authority. It is if we see how the over uh, uh, how the salary uh, grows during the person's uh, life period. We uh, that's definitely what we see here. The picture says uh, the in your career actually grows until 40, 42 years of age, and then it's dramatically falling. And that says only one thing. Uh, the new generation are they fit to the modern market. Elder generations, that's a fundamental problem. And that is an issue so big that really invention, uh, in, uh, let's say intervention of government is necessary here. Uh, that's about labor force. About immigration, uh, so far it was a taboo issue, and uh, to be honest about in political economy, that was, that was the you know, issue to discuss. Yeah, it was not nice to discuss it. Right now we open it and uh, we see, of course, uh, a lot of issues, what they say, or uh, our labor market is stabilized by Ukrainians. They already uh, registered 12,000 who wants to work. Active is 8,000 uh, Ukrainians. And then we, uh, we issue already uh, more than 20,000 labor visas from different countries where nobody has been uh, aware of that really what it is. And, and then is, uh, if, uh, there is another effect, but we really don't know how big it is because there's no registration. That is uh, uh, rented labor. Yeah, that it started from Poland. Uh, the, you, you, well, how it's working? You can in your app can order. I don't know if you want to, something in labor in in uh, in uh, construction industry or somewhere else, and you can order X amount of people, and they will arrive one morning here on site where you work, and an evening they just disappear. And and that was uh, we checked that started from Poland. Now is Lithuania from Lithuania such service provided, and now it's from Estonia. And we really just calculating the size how it is. Yeah, and that says we really uh, have to look into uh, into. Uh, into into file and uh, and one thing what has happened recently minister of economy just uh, uh, came up uh, on coalition level with suggesting to remove all kind of barriers but uh, we have for level skilled employees that's not already a political decision but we he heading towards this but we would like to be a little bit careful to say you know, from one corner to quickly to another corner, we really want to find a good balance uh, political move here. And and uh, I would say in, in autumn, close to autumn, we will have decision on removal of, of entry barriers here. Slata? Yeah, talking about, I think, uh, the labor market and uh, our human capital topic, I think, uh, again, I, I will be coming back probably to what uh, FISL is standing for, is really uh, a huge public sector reform. Uh, you can probably realize how many ministers uh, and ministries are responsible for the human capital topic. Yeah, it is uh, not than three, more than more than four, probably five in the different dimensions. And uh, I think this is important. Um, if we really believe that our uh, people are those who will drive the growth uh, and really will help us in our uh, economic transformation, I think actually this should be in the focus I mean, five is definitely too much. Three is probably very complicated. Probably it should be one which co consolidate the effort on how do we look into the uh, human capital topic? How do we educate our people? How do we reskill our people? How do we make them relevant for what is coming to us? and for all this huge innovation and uh, you know the uh, the digital um, changes which are coming so i would like to say yes there is a lot of internal thing again and therefore the public reform which is uh, sort of currently is ahead of us is very very important for the success of this country because it's actually will really show the tone from the top on how we need to look on the issues which are important. May I have a short comment? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, just, please. Yeah. Uh, to react on Zlat's comment is uh, uh, what was very interesting thing about forming this government, the first time uh, in, in three decades actually decided to uh, change the government structure in related to the priorities what the government had. And we created a new climate ministry and set up Ministry of Economics, particularly for responsible for human capital development. Uh, so far, there were no ministry responsible for such policy. And, uh, and of course, ministry is picking up its first six months, but in generally, there is ministry. And uh, under ministry operates uh, uh, Employment Council, which consists from three ministers, Minister of Education, Minister of Economy, and Minister of Welfare. And, and I think that is a relevant structure. Just, uh, I would say, wait and see at the moment. Yeah, and on to you, Niels. And, and perhaps, if you know something about it, the last question that came in uh, about this here with competence, somebody says that, uh, according to that person, that there are many barriers for specialized people to return and work here. Um, is that so in your view also? Because that is obviously a problem. I, I don't know anything about it, but also please address to the extent that you wanted the other, the other issues that we had here. Yeah, no, I, I know we're short on time. I, I, I completely support everything that, that the minister and Zlata said. I think, um, I think, I think one, of the, one of the, you know, with hindsight, it's quite clear we've, we've underinvested in education in the past. I mean, you know, if we had invested more, especially at the high school and university level, um, in, in relevant uh, faculties, you know, we would have had less, uh, more qualified people leaving because I think a lot of people will tend to study abroad and then, you know, a very big proportion of them don't, don't return. So it's, and, and that's, that's, I think, a systemic issue that it's never too late to address, but it, it's take, it will take time for that to, to really have, it, have an impact. Um, I think, you know, I, I don't think there's, I don't think there's, um, too many barriers. I mean, we, we've uh, certainly in, in, in Luminor um, and in Printful, uh, you know, we, we hire many um, um, expatriate Latvians or, or people who have left or, and come back or people who were born outside and, 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 and are returning. Um, I don't think there's, there's a barrier. Perhaps there's not, there's not a good flow of information in terms of opportunities and needs. Um, I, but I, don't, I don't think there's any particular barrier um, per se. I, I think it's more um, stopping the exodus of people leaving, investing in ed education, and, and, um, and ensuring that we have a healthy immigration policy to, to make sure that, that you know, um, the, the economy is running along at a good pace. Then I also have this year, there was a the question came up uh, quite a bit earlier about the gender pay gap, and I've also seen that that is growing uh, here in Latvia, which it obviously should not. Um, any impact from that on, on the labor market, and also perhaps address startups, and we have all of five minutes left. Right. So quick uh, things to say about that. If nothing, then uh, you don't have to, but please, of course. As I said, regarding uh, uh, government is, uh, uh, and, and startups, uh, I think more or less things are done. The startup ecosystem is designed and, uh, and investment money is allocated potential and there are invested. That is full, full, let's say, community in place. Uh, then a second level, what is more complicated, uh, those are the universities, which really develop some ideas. And, and, uh, and uh, I, would, I would really would be happy to see, for example, a technical university as, a, uh, as a, like a Tel Aviv University, which is uh, less uh, publication or, 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 or less publication or academic based than, than startups based. And, and uh, uh, that's we maybe we'll see in uh, foreseeing future. But, uh, but again, there is uh, again education system that is create ambition, uh, willingness to risk, and and willingness to put different ideas to innovate. Uh, that's what we're lacking actually in communities. There is very little can uh, government uh, can do about gender gap. Uh, I. Uh, uh, very little comment on this. I think that is uh, that's deep root in, in social policies. And, uh, and uh, but I, I already uh, say I, it looks like it's changing now. Yeah, that's what I shortly address. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, but perhaps you, Slata. Yeah, maybe I could um, start with the startup ecosystem. 
Come on, I think we are one of, uh, have a very famous startup in, in Latvia. And I think even you unicorns in Latvia as well. So let's hope that another, uh, you know, like uh, Aeronis and uh, some other I mean, uh, hy hyper growth companies will go to the unicorn level and will be able to show themselves. Uh, I mean, I don't think that we, I, again, I think we need to be proud of what we see from the uh, uh, startup. Does it support, does the government heavily support it or it is growing despite the support? I think it is uh, um, probably another panel issue. <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't think, I don't think the government should su support startups. I don't, they, don't, they don't have to. I mean, I think, I really think the ec ecosystem is very good. I think it's going to take time to see the benefits. In Estonia, it just started earlier and you can see the benefits to their economy. Look at the number of unicorns mm -hmm. they have. And, you know, let, let's hope there's another 10 printfuls um, at the next Tesum you know, um, and, and, you know, let's th that it. should be the case. Um, and I think, I think on the gender gap issue, it's also um, uh, a governance issue, and it's really important to have very good corporate governance because, you know, it's a very big theme across Europe. Hence, again, I think it's very important to have, you know, good international, um, you know, board members, diverse board members um, who also focus on this at the enterprise level. Uh, to, to make the changes happen. We're, we're certainly doing it in, in the companies that I'm involved in. So. No, I, I completely uh, concur with what Neil was uh, saying, actually. I think on the, uh, you know, large uh, corporations here in Latvia, I think uh, the gender balance is still really missing. And uh, again, from me, for me, from my side, probably it's not so relevant because it's PwC, we're a three partner, we're, f we're three females, we feel very good in, in this environment. But uh, again, if we look into uh, the general topic, I think uh, it's really need to have certain uh, intervention from the governance perspective, um, how it should be solved. Okay, thanks. And thank you very much to the panelists. I mean, a lot of issues came up here, but, um, and I'm very happy with, with, with your interventions, but I'm quite unhappy with my, my, my own role here because I don't think that I managed to sort of put things under control. Uh, either we should go on for another couple of hours or we should have narrowed the topic down from the beginning, but it's a little bit too late to do that uh, right now. I will allow myself then just to answer a very simple question that also showed up because there was somebody very much in the beginning that I asked, is it possible to get these slides? Yes, it is. Yeah, just come and ask me and so on. At least that, that, that was an easy one. But otherwise, thank you also to you, the audience, for a lot of questions and, and we didn't even get into one third of them. Right? Sorry about that. It means that the discussion here in Latvia, needless to say, will carry on in terms of securing growth that said, I think that's also what we have been doing in all the 30 years that I have been living here. And that is perhaps also one of our issues this year that do we talk too much and do too little? Not quite sure, but allow that to be the last words for me besides saying, please give a hand to my panel and then it's on to the uh, forum moderator uh, afterwards. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for the uh, splendid panel, and we now have half an hour for a coffee break. Remember, espressos, not cappuccinos. <laughs>